Hello everyone, welcome to the class of AI and today we are going to see some important concept of uh, Python and uh, the points which we are going to discuss the topics are basically if statements, while statement and for loops, right? <clears throat> so if a statement are used to you test for a particular condition and uh, respond appropriately. So what does it say is that uh, if are mainly used to check the conditions, right? Whether x is equals to something whether x is not equals to something or x is equals to means less than greater than but we have to see how to write them appropriately that is the most important part right so equals to condition you have to put two assignment operators and for not equals to do you have to put exclamation mark and then equals to sign greater than simple greater than sign but if you want to check greater than equals to then you have to put x and then greater than equals to 72. So similarly all other conditions so let's start with an example which example says that we have assigned a value of 12 to the variable called x and we are checking whether x is less than 72 or not so if we run it we say it's saying true right because x is less than 72 and if i make it 92 the condition will be changed to false right now if a statement can be used with else condition, sometimes you have multiple conditions to check. So for example, over here, I'm putting in variable age and age I'm assigning to somebody who's 19. And if I'm checking, if age is greater than 17, then you can drive. Otherwise, I have to print a message. Sorry, you can't drive. So let's say like that. So you can drive because the value is greater than 17. So let me print it 14. So now the value will be say, sorry, you can't write. So this is how the programmer writes basically the if statements, whether they have conditions to check. Now we can have multiple else, con else uh, if condition with else if condition. So maybe there are multiple conditions. So for example, if I say age equals to two, I've assigned. And if age is greater than equals to 18, then you can watch a movie. And if age is less than 18 and greater than 12, then you need to have someone adult with you to watch a movie else you can't watch a movie. That means if you are less than eight, uh, 12 year old, you can't watch the movie. So for example, I put it the age two, then you can see, sorry, you can't wait, watch the movie because you are uh, younger than uh, 12 year old. And if I write 13, then it will say, yes, you need to have someone above 18 to watch the movie. And if I print it 24, 34, say it's a, you can watch the movie because you are, you are well above, right? Now, I didn't get that. Now, so uh, for the user input, we can ask someone, if some user to give the input, right? So for example, we want someone to, instead of putting the age, through the variable, we'll ask someone to, can you please enter your age? So we have taken a variable, we have taken a string, and we over there, we have message that what is your age? We are taking as an input, we are converting that age into an integer because we want age in the integer, right? So let's say over here like that, and let's say I'm 34 year old, and if I press enter, say, yes, you can watch the movie. If I run it again, if I say, I am 14 year old and press enter. You need to have someone with you above 18 to watch the movie, right? So this is how if statements work. Now, a very important concept is while loop. So within the while loop, we can execute a set of statements as long as condition is true. What does it mean that we are basically trying to execute the statement until some condition met? So for example, initially, what we are saying, we are assigning a variable uh, i, a value one, and we are checking while i is less than four, print i and then i plus one. So we are incrementing the value of i by one. And whenever the i will become, means will become greater than four, then we will stop. So let's see, oh, greater than equals to, yeah, because we have pressed the this sign over there. And if we put it equals to four, what will happen then it will print four also because we have changed the condition now uh, there is another break statement will break your execution of the loop right and uh, means you are checking the while condition while giving the break statement what you can say we you can stop your execution of the while once the condition is met so for example while i is less than 10 means while i is less than 10 where i is starting with 1 we are printing the value of i when i is becoming 5 we will break the loop 
and see it will only print the value up to 5. Now with the continue statement we can we can continue the thing so for example we'll with the continue statement we can stop the current iteration and continue start with the next so the best example is to say for example i have six students in the class and i'm starting with uh, like zero maybe because the indexing is starting from zero and i will i'm incrementing my loop by one right and whenever this condition met i will continue right and rest i will print so for example it will everything it will print everything except the value of three because where this condition met it didn't print it but it saw the continue loop over here so it went back it didn't came here because of this continue right because for this particular thing when i became three it this particular part is executed and it's become true so it's continued and go back to the previous thing right now coming back to the for loop the for loop is very interesting basically and I think every programmer use it, right? So for a uh, for loop is used for iterating over the sequence, whether it can be list, it can be tuple, it can be dictionary, a set or a string. With for loop, we can execute a set of statement. And once uh, for each statement in the list or tuple, we'll go one by one. For example, we have created a list over here in the car uh, by the name of car, and we have other um, cars inside it. And we are using the for loop to print so we what you are doing we are checking this we are mentioning that this is the list car and for each car so that means initially the bmw will come and then it will print the bmw next audi will come it will print the audi so every value from this one by one is jumping to this x and we are printing it yes looping through the strings this is really really interesting if you see we'll we'll take the each element of the mercedes because it's basically a string and it will so for example it's a whole string but there is no break or it will be break it will print a space because we are passing towards this we can print each and every character of this mercedes using the for loop like that right break statement again what we have seen uh, above in the while loop we can break the condition right when the honda is met so for example honda is lying over here so when the honda will met it will go through the for loop it will come here 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 this condition will met and it this will stop so see honda came whenever he met the honda he will not go to the toyota and kia because we put this break statement again we can use the continue statement so that means when the con condition mercedes will met so for example when we are iterating over this loop the condition mercedes will come it will not print the mercedes because of this continue over here so that means Toyota and Kia uh, will be printed, not Mercedes. So Audi, BMW, Honda, Mercedes is gone and other things are printed, right? Instead of using some time uh, for the for loop, we use the function called range. So because for example, we have to define that we want to do from, for example, we have to see how many elements are here in the list or something, but you can use a range function. So range will start from one and it will go up to six. So whatever the value will come from one to six, this we are going to print inside the X. So see zero, one, two, because the index will start from zero. So it's going to print like that. We can define the range. For example, we, I haven't decided it. I have mentioned it that we are going to start with three or something. But here I'm deciding that I'm starting with three. So it's going to three, print three, four, five because six is going to stop. So you have to be in clear in mind because the indexing is starting from zero in the range function. So you, if you are going to print up to 10, write 11, right? Again, else for in a for loop. So if, for example, we are saying from one, zero to seven, that means up to six, print X else finally finished so that means once this all element will be finished it is not going to meet the condition and say it's finally finished all six elements came and then this else came and in the else message we have written finally finished nested loop is very good because sometimes you have to work on matrices you have to work on multi-dimensional array or whatever means uh, multi-dimensional data you have so maybe or maybe you have two list right and so for example, over here, we have defined the car as the list one and list two as a bike. So what it's going to do, it's going to take car and for the first item, which is BMW over here, what I'm saying, 
yes take bmw port pick bmw from here now for y in the bikes so in bikes we have yamaha kawasaki and ducati so the first element will be yamaha so x is what x is bmw y is yamaha right then it will come back to this for loop which is inside it will go to kawasaki so bmw kawasaki will be printed bmw ducati will be printed then it will come back to this loop now the audi will come audi yamaha will be printed audi kawasaki audi ducati then mercedes yamaha mercedes kawasaki and mercedes ducati so see it's going to print like that so this is how you do your nested loop i hope you like this video and do subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much